Hey folks, it's Jang here from UltimateRC.com and RCMania.com, the place for toy grade RC reviews. This is the video to accompany my review of the new Air Hogs Griffin 3 channel helicopter. Now normally when you think of Air Hogs RC helicopters, you think of micros and really, really small little things. Well this one clearly is not a micro. This is 16 inches long, nose to tip of the tail. It uses a coaxial design, that's where you've got two counter-rotating main rotors up top, that's for stability. And then back here on the tail, you see there is a tail prop, but it's facing upward. That's to give thrust from the tail to give a forward or rearward pitch to the helicopter, P-I-T-C-H, and that's what causes it to be able to move forward and back. Up and down is just from thrust, and then to turn left and right, it just changes the relative speeds of the two rotors. One's rotating one direction, the other's rotating the other. You change the speed and it will turn. Here's the controller. It's pretty simple and straightforward. You've got throttle over on the left, as is pretty normal for Airhog's uh, craft, but as you can see, there's no spring in it. It will not automatically return to the bottom. So you can just set it in a place where you want it, and it'll just stay there. On the right hand side you have your yaw or you're turning left and right and you have your forward and backward control and you can adjust those together the red knob is to adjust the spinning so in case it turns on its own you can stop that as you can see there's no charge port on this though and that's pretty unusual for an air hogs controller normally you hook the controller right up to the craft to charge it instead you have an ac adapter and this is the charger you plug those together you're going to plug in the ac adapter to the wall of course then you get your Griffin helicopter and you plug the charger right into a large charge port at the back of it. Once you've got it plugged in, there is a LED light on the top of it that will flash in different colors depending upon the state of the charge and it'll let you know when you are ready to fly. Now the instructions tell you to always fly outdoors and just to avoid windy conditions. Well, that's uh, unfortunately not the greatest of advice because here I'm in an area that's protected from wind. There's just a very slight breeze and this little helicopter just could not handle it. You need to fly any micro-sized or small-sized aircraft, whether it is an airplane or a helicopter, indoors or in an area where there is absolutely no wind whatsoever, where if you can feel the slightest breeze, it's just not going to be able to handle it. However, with the Griffin, because it is larger than your standard uh, low-end toy-grade helicopter, you do want to have it in a large open area, especially when you're just getting used to it. I already have plenty of experience flying helicopters, so I can keep it in a small area, but when you're new to it, you want to have enough space that you're not going to crash into walls, especially not into furniture and people. Look for wide open areas like this, and when you get started, you want to keep it low to the ground and just go nice and slow and easy until you get the hang of the controls. Now, as you can see, once you do get the hang of the controls, the Airhawks Griffin flies great! It's absolutely phenomenal. It is gyro stabilized, which is something that's going to uh, prevent it from spinning out on its own. People who have experience with older two channel helicopters know that oftentimes it's tough to keep them from just going into a wild spin in one place or to keep them going in one direction. This will always go in the direction that you point it. Its control feedback is excellent where you tell it to go, it will go. When you tell it to go, it will go. It's very smooth. The controls on the, the control sticks on the transmitter are very smooth and easy to move around. I don't feel like I'm fighting with the craft at all. Here I'm actually filming it while doing this flying and it's just very smooth and very controllable and very safe. I'm very happy with the flight dynamics of the Airhawks Griffin. There is one bad thing about it though. When the battery charge gets low, in order to protect the battery from being over discharged, the helicopter will just shut itself off and it falls to the ground like that. For more info and my full thoughts on the Airhogs Griffin, be sure to check out my full review at rcmania.com. See you there!